Welcome to the TSL Podcast, Steve Maeda here, and today we're talking about social anxiety. And we're not only talking about just social anxiety, but how to connect with it and the meaning of it and how we can start to have some base level conversations. So there's really actually a lot that we're covering in this. I promise it'll go quick. And I promise, because I've taught this so many different times, we're gonna structure it in a way where you can do it. So if you have social anxiety, and you've been really into pickup or different things to get yourself started, this is gonna, kind of clear up a lot of the gray area in between and get you functional and having a conversation, but also motivating you so that you can have those deeper connections. That's very important, that motivation of success. So TSL podcast, where we record these things is either they're on Facebook lives or they're on our calls. And this is on a Wednesday night call. It's the 23rd of August, 2017 it's our TSL online call. It's actually 834. We got six guys on here from all over the map uh, talking about some different stuff and a lot of different topics. This is the first one we're talking about tonight, diving into, uh, but we have a lot of other stuff that's that's on the plate of guys who've submitted questions and so on. So it's very important. If you want to be a part of this stuff, check out the free stuff linked down below and get involved with what we're doing because we're a community. We're a community first, and then we put all this stuff out there uh, to to have you guys listen and access and and grow our our audience man so i'm glad that you guys are a part of it but be a part of where we're interacting on even the free level at the austin men's development board or in our different programs like md excellence or amd plus and so on uh there's all sorts of different areas where you can better yourself in all different ways of masculinity so social anxiety man this is crazy and it's such a frustrating thing with men or women but mainly we coach men here is is that when you are terrified to talk to somebody and you you man your your heart goes crazy you walk into a new room you you think you're gonna mess up at something you think everybody's judging you if you take an action then all the eyes are on you and so on and there's so much that goes into it where the brain runs in you know, when we analyze this, there's all sorts of different theories, which are probably very true, but the fight or flight kicks in, our parasympathetic nervous system kicks in, we get into a panic zone, and we can't get out of that panic zone, and all of a sudden, we got to bail from the situation, remain quiet, and shelter ourselves, and these are the natural feelings from it. Now, when we do that, and we have a social situation, or we see other people being social or able to do it, we compare ourselves to others, and it feels bad, even if there weren't other people that we saw that we're interacting, but sadly a lot of times there are, it would still feel bad to walk away from a social situation feeling that you couldn't express yourself. And when we're sitting in that sort of pain and confusion and that sort of heightened traumatic feeling that your brain and your body is feeling and going through with that, your nervous system in overdrive, man, you're not going to find a solution from that. You're gonna find panic, you're gonna find fear, you're gonna find a lot of blame. So a lot of guys come into different stuff like pickup or the seduction industry or the dating industry to find out how we can solve this. Now, one of the things that's great about this is also one of the bad things about it because I don't think it's taught right, is that you learn some baseline templates of how to communicate ways that you can communicate that are intended to get you functional. The sad part about this is that it just becomes scripts and nobody's actually working with you on what's going to work and what's not going to work. So how this actually question, how this question came up tonight actually comes from a guy and he said, hey Steve, I'm going through week two of TSL Online and uh, he's done it before and he's like, I'm going through some of the stuff like the doubting questions or forms of bait that we move into qualifiers. These are all you know technical examples of what we talk about but he's saying, man, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. And sometimes, you know, I'll do a doubting question and I'll go over what that means here in a second, because we're going to break away from the technique. It's not about the technique. It's about the connection and the motivation to continue. And in that, you know, sometimes I freeze up. Sometimes I'll do a doubting question, which would be something like, man, I'm not sure if I can ask you this, but are you somebody that is good in relationships? So the doubting question part is, I'm not sure if I can ask you this, but, and then we ask a qualifier after that. And in that one, I asked a fairly large question, a question that's hard to answer, and I did that intentionally with what's gonna set up and all this sort of stuff. So in that, he said, you know, the person was confused, they didn't know how to answer, they didn't feel like they could answer, and so then it made him nervous, and you know the, the conversation just goes away and then you walk away from that because you tried, you affected them. And in that effect, 
they kind of thought it was weird or it was uncomfortable, or at least you felt that way. And that is a crappy feeling. So let's go over this. I said, I said, Hey man, Look, number one, it's not about the technique. The technique is a template. It's an attempt to try and reach a social phenomenon of connection. And what you need to get is connection. You need to get that connection because connection feels good. And connection isn't just like, you know, some word out there, more specifically what connection means is, is that you feel them and they feel you, that you are seen as an important and valuable person in that interaction. Now, a lot of times too, when we're looking for social anxiety, we're looking at it in terms of dating being the motive. So a lot of times it's like, it's gotta be a girl. It's gotta be a hot girl. It's gotta be somebody that is going to move me in some sort of way. No, Wrong answer. Do not follow that path. This is one of the mistakes of pickup in the dating and seduction industry that we say only talk to hot women, only talk to the women that you want. Whereas, especially with social anxiety, but in general, social and sexual health, no matter what your motive is, if you don't have social anxiety and you're dating people and you, you want to connect in these ways, man, talk to everybody because it, it makes it easier. <laughs> If you want to have relationships with hot chicks or if you want to have relationships that are superlative in your life with the, the ideal woman of your dreams, the real answer to that is that you start talking to everybody. It will make it so much easier. That is literally how it works. It is, it is great. And it builds a level of character and social and sexual health that we can get into on probably either later in this, but as well as into many other different podcasts and so on. So that connection is key. What we want is the connection. So in doing all this like hocus pocus stuff or, you know, teases or rapport breaks or whatever different social dynamic stuff is really there so that we can make a connection. If we do not make that connection where I genuinely feel that person and they genuinely feel me, then we have not accomplished what we need to, to motivate ourselves to want to do this, to be ourselves and gain faith in things. Now, if you really want to look at different like mindsets and belief change stuff, there's podcasts and webinars that we have on that. But one of the most important things you need to know about rewiring your brain or about uh, working through true habits and developing them in your life isn't just the repetition of it. It's, it's building an emotional foundation where you can build those habits. So if I'm always in a panic zone with my body and my mind, tripped by social anxiety, and I'm trying to build a habit of talking to people, it will always get interrupted. So what I need to do is start working on calming that emotion. And then in that, I can take actions, get successes, and then change my beliefs. Okay, so that's very important. The most important thing in changing your beliefs and habits, especially if you have something like social anxiety, but it doesn't matter what it is. You know, if you want to get better sleep, if you want to, you know, change your beliefs about uh, how you respond to rejection, your emotional bedrock and foundation has to be solid in order for that to happen. So what we want to do here is we want to calm those emotions when talking to somebody, be able to sit in that tension. It will be hard at first. This is something that is really ingrained in how you speak and communicate for years or however many times you've uh, done it. Add a social dynamic to that that is just a template to achieve connection and then get that connection. Feel good about it. Make that the goal. And once we have that as our baseline, then you can start moving your social dynamics in different ways. So a couple things that we're going to do in this social dynamic to achieve the connection, meaning I care about you, you care about me, and we feel each other, is we're going to first initiate a conversation. We're going to, so we're going to, easiest person possible, always, always, especially with social anxiety, but any technique you're trying to learn. If we're trying to learn a social dynamic and learn the function and absolute you know, capability of that social dynamic is what we're going to see here is you'll be able to predict these things and get specific responses is that we need to pick the easiest person possible so that we don't have, so that our emotional bedrock and foundation isn't interrupted. If that's interrupted, man, we're, we're not going to get anything. We're going to always be trying to feel better. You know, whether that's get the result, get the hot chick, get out of pain, run, win, whatever it is. But, but that's not how we develop the true habit. All right. So, 
The thing is, is what we want to do is we want to ask a question. We're going to do what's called a qualifier or a question, but we're going to do that to initiate it with somebody that is very simple and easy to talk to. So this could be somebody at your gym. This could be somebody at a cafe you attend. This could be the person who is ringing you up at the store. Again, this isn't something to, this isn't, we're not doing this to get something. We're not doing this to get a date. We're not doing this to win over a hot chick. We're not doing this to get validation. We're not doing this to get a sale. We're doing this to learn the social dynamic and the function of it. So we're going to ask a question and that question is going to uh, be intense to them it's going to add confusion it's going to be hard to answer because you're a stranger all right so in that now we're not doing that for a reason to gain power to hurt them to be better than them in any sort of way but that question is there to to be be something deep and somebody who doesn't know you won't be able to answer or talk to you about something deep because they don't know you and they're at work or wherever they're at and they're unprepared to have that conversation. Even somebody who you've been talking to in a rich conversation where you've been sharing your heart and soul with for 30 minutes, you still may not get an honest answer. And I, let me rephrase that. You still may not get a true answer of their entire explanation of themselves because Hey man, it's hard to do that. It's hard to even access these points within you. So in this, we were asking the question that had to do with relationships. Are you good at having a relationship? That's a hard question to answer. It's sometimes that may seem that it's inappropriate to answer, but it's one of those things that will get somebody thinking. So let's say I'm at the cafe and I walk up and I know I'm gonna ask a hard question like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a buffer. So a buffer is something that just sets up the question. It's very simple. It's a form of bait, actually, if you look in the social dynamics realm, and it just allows me to then jump to a deeper question. So the buffer here will just be like, hey, you know, this is a weird question, but I wanna ask you anyways. All right, so now I'm prefing, prefacing the question that's going to be deep and intense with a buffer, all right? It makes it easier for me to jump there. Why do I do that? Because I wanna talk about deeper things and I wanna feel that connection with a real part of somebody very quick. Whether, it, or the other option would be, I might go through a chain of superficial things to talk about for a long time, slowly build to rapport and connection and get there. But I wanna jump there and it's very easy to do and very predictable to do. So what you're gonna see is if you use these social dynamics, they will work in a chain like that and they can adapt. So it's not a script. You know, it's not something that can't be uh, switched to things that you really like to talk about. It's actually a, a template or a model of social dynamics that is predictable that you can adapt to change in many different ways. So I could say, hey, you know, this is a, this is a weird question. I know I just put in a, the, uh, an order for a cappuccino, but are you good at relationships? So there that swung me in from the buffer to the qualifier. Are you good at having relationships. That person is immediately confused. I can expect and count on that confusion. That confusion might look like, why are you asking that? So that might have some resistance in terms of them being a little bit frustrated or maybe even angry that you're asking. It might be like, oh man, that's a weird question. So they're surprised, right? But kind of laughing and smiling. In fact, you're really going to get three expected responses. One, that is going to laugh and be nervous. One that is going to answer right away, which is probably just a superficial answer and not very true because it's not thought through and it's very, uh, there's a demand to think that through. And the, the third one, which is very unlikely, is that frustration that comes through. You might just get a little hint of it too, but all of them can then be, be, uh, be reworked by just adding a simple ground in an explanation. So in this situation, this guy is actually getting married. So it's like, man, up, oh, I can't relate with that. But but hold on one second. I'm gonna get to it, okay? So he's getting married, uh, but he but he's got the social anxiety and wants to work through it. So he could just simply say, you know, man, I was really bad at relationships. And I said, hey man, just tell your story. What it was like, what happened, what it's like now. Really simple, in three or four sentences, maybe five sentences, but don't take too long to explain it because we're just trying to use this as a tool to open them up. So we're gonna tell a quick ground and his situation is he's getting married. We'll change that for you guys here in a second. Um, but we're just gonna follow that model of that ground of what it was like, what happened um, and what it's, what it's like now. Now in that, the whole purpose of this is to calm down that tension and then inspire them to wanna connect with us. This is really cool. So this part, this ground area is really cool. So that first like, three to five seconds of asking the buffer to the heavy question, having the confusion was all really there so I can ground and have them listen and then jump 
to them engaging. And this is really awesome. So in like 30 seconds, I can build engagement with almost anybody, right? And do all sorts of variants with it, even if you don't have social anxiety. So all I'm gonna say is like, you know what? So I know it's a tough question. It's hard for people to answer. And I'm asking for a reason just because I, I was terrible at relationships. I had relationships all my life. They'd go a couple months, they didn't work out. And then I met somebody and it was great. You know, I met her online. I couldn't even believe what was happening. It was like, when is this going to mess up? But it didn't. And we're getting married in a few months. And so I just, I just want to ask people like, you know, man, do you think you're good at relationships? Because at one time I didn't think I was and now I am. And so now we're back to that same ending question just to engage them. So if you saw what I did there, I added a buffer. Hey, this is a weird question. I know I just ordered a cappuccino. Then I ask the question, are you good at relationships? Then I get the expected response of confusion, which will have one of those three responses of them being uh, kind of laugh about it and answer or answer right away with just a superficial question or have a little bit of anger or frustration towards it. And then I just ground, I tell my story, right? And it's very short, 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds of your story, maybe even less than that. And then I finish it off with a question. So that's why I'm asking the question. You know, that's, that's why I'm asking people what that's like to, to, you know, be in a relationship or to, to have relationship skills because I didn't think I had any. Now, let's just say, let's just say you don't have, you're not getting married, right? And let's say socializing is terrifying. What I feel is so important is that you express yourself. You always tell your story. So let's mix this up a little bit, all right? Let's make our buffer have to do with that. Let's make our qualifier have to do even with that. Let's make the expected response that they're gonna have is gonna probably be consistent in the same. Then let's add our ground. Just remember what's happening now. So it's not really something in the past that's what it was like, what happened, what's happening now, but what's happening now? And maybe even what you're looking for and then ask them again. So this may sound confusing, but super simple. And believe it or not, if you get it into function, you'll notice that you already communicate in these ways and your good conversations end up in these ways and it will have a good result. Now, of course, your delivery, it could be off and you might need to improve these things, but with passable delivery and you know, with, with being able to calm that emotional hotbed and the, your brain sprinting and freezing up and, and having it get in your throat and so on, these things could happen and we need to calm them down. So those are all factors, but more of the reason to join a group. So I could just say, let's say I'm ordering a coffee again, right? And I go up and I get a coffee and I say, I say, man, you know, I'm going to ask you this, but I'm really nervous, but I'm going to take a chance. Uh, I'm going to ask you anyway, but, uh, and maybe your voice starts shaking. Cool. Great. You already said you were nervous. Start owning that. Start being able to call that out. Now, that can be very difficult, but this is imperative. Remember, when you're going through these emotions of nervousness, you don't want to panic. Or if you start to panic, it's okay to let that person know. It's like, oh, man, I, <laughs> I can't believe I'm asking you this. I'm really nervous. But uh, uh, let's say that, that starts to happen. I say, well, I'm going to ask you anyway. But do you get some times where you talk to somebody and you you just can't get the words out of your mouth. You almost feel like you're, you're, you're emotional, but you're not, or your voice, your throat it gets caught in your throat and you freeze up, All right? So you're just trying to be in your presence here. We're literally doing the same thing. We added a buffer and then we added a deep question, which is very difficult to answer. Now we get the expected response. Now there's gonna be a fourth variation to this. When you show that sort of nervousness that's gonna happen that you can expect, this is the beauty of social dynamics because you can predict it. So the first one, they, yeah, I guess, all right. Or, or uh, uh, I don't know, maybe sometimes. Uh, 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 or the second one, which might be like answering right away. Like, no, no, I don't get that way. Okay, oh, shit. what do I do with that? Uh, or it could be a little bit frustration of like, um, yeah, it's a weird question. I'm at work. And, uh, so the fourth one, especially when we show a little bit of that pain and weakness, we get advice and advice is great when we ask for advice, but when we're not asking for advice, it actually gets in the way of connection. I always say it's a form of judgment because it's keeping somebody detached. They're not showing their real selves and they're able to, you know, stay in that third person sort of role play. So they might go, Oh, oh yeah, you know, it's okay. Yeah, I can tell you're nervous. You'll get over it. What I did was this and that, da, da, da. No, no, no. We don't, we don't necessarily want that. But it, whether or not we get any of those four different responses, which can be very confusing, like let's say they're like, uh, no, I don't feel that way. All you're going to do is say, well, uh, 
man, so I do, one of the things I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm talking to people about it to, to try and be honest, but I literally can get terrified when talking to somebody. And, you know, I don't really want that anymore. Now, what we're going to do here is at the very end of that, because especially when we're talking about a current problem that we're having now, a current issue, again, we don't want advice. So we're going to do two things at the end of this ground. And it's super easy. I don't want you to get more confused about it. I know there's a lot of information here. You can rewatch this video. We have tons of videos actually on this. There's actually tons of free different PDFs and so on that, that you can find on this. But I want you to add two things, all right? So I want you to add a direction that you want it to go. So you just said what you wanted. You don't want that to happen anymore, but you wanna talk about the direction that you want. And then you also wanna put the question on them. So when does this happen to you? So let's say they say, no, I, I never feel that way. Or why are you asking this? And so you say, well, look, I feel this way all the time. It's, it's hard for me to talk about. And you know, it terrifies me and it, it look, I just don't wanna feel these certain feelings anymore. And I guess what I'm really looking at is the potential of connection, right? So that was me listing the direction that I want to go at. What I really want to know is that this is okay. What I really want to know is, is that people share and connect on these things. What I really want to know is, is how somebody can, can see that they're valuable in the world. This is pushing that direction. So now what I want to do is I want to ask them directly that direction. So have you ever felt that you are completely whole? All right. So I'm asking a question based on that directly to them rather than getting advice. So this whole thing would go in this form. Number one, we buffer and we say, oh, God, I'm really nervous and oh, I get barely tired. I'm going to ask you this and it might come across weird, but just go with me here. But have you ever felt now with the qualifier, have you ever felt like just trapped or nervous or not being able to communicate with somebody like you feel it in your throat or you panic and like even right now I'm getting all emotional, but I, I shouldn't. Have you ever had an experience like that? Yes, no, maybe so. You get one of the four variations there. Um, and let's say they say, uh, yeah, but you, you know, you're going to be okay. Like, like I used to be that way and my brother told me this and that da, 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 and you say, well, look, you then ground. And the purpose of the ground is to get them to understand and feel you, right? And in this case, to also elicit a little bit of them, all right? So we then say, well, look, you know, this happens to me a lot and I feel terror and fear and all this sort of stuff. And I don't want to feel that anymore because, list the real purpose of this or the direction that we want to go in. It's because I believe like connection is good. And if people can have that, man, I want to share that too ending qualifier when have you really shared something that you valued with somebody like when does that happen to you like just first thing off the top of your head now a couple things that i always do at the end of this to to push a qualifier more is that i may do something like you know pressure like the first thing off the top of your head or just whatever you're thinking right now i might also do a technique called listing of threes we have tons of videos on this stuff if you're ever looking for rapport we have a shit ton of stuff that is social dynamics based and geared toward gear based and geared towards you. But a listing of threes would be something like, like, well, you know, like you shared something with your family or you shared something with a coworker or the last thing you woke up and you really valued a human connection. What, when has that been today? That would be a listing of threes. And our purpose of this is to connect with them. Our purpose of this is to know that we have value. Our purpose of this is that we can get social. Here is the thing, guys. If you have social anxiety, you are going to heal that, gain confidence with it, and change your beliefs about it when you start to build that connection of functionality. This is very, very important. And to notice this is that your fear and all that anxiety is separate than the function of socializing. If I can get you social, if I can get you connecting with people, that's going to take care of itself. We were born to do it. We were made to do it. If I can get you social, you're going to correct yourself. Your fear will be taken care of in another way. So that will be taken care of with calming your emotions, getting yourself in good actions, resetting your mindset, building confidence. And that might come from actions of being social, but you need to see them as two separate divides. They, they intercede with each other because the socializing triggers the fear. But 
I got to get you social. You, and once you do start to get social and you get functional with it, your social capabilities will start to take over. Once that takes over and you can relax with the fear a little bit, because that fear will come back many, many times and even possibly throughout your life, but it will get considerably more manageable. What you're going to do is you're going to build more faith and saying like, oh shit, I'm fear. I'm, I'm in fear. I'm in panic. This is going to pass in 30 minutes and I'll be fine. This is going to pass in 30 minutes and I may have to eject from this conversation, but I know in 30, 45 minutes, maybe it'll take a whole day. I can then get into a conversation again and it doesn't fall into the belief that I'm never going to have a conversation again, that that socializing is painful, that fear is something that I need to run from and fear is something that actually makes me weak. Fear in this sort of terror in this parasympathetic nervous system reaction is there for all sorts of different reasons of your body and mind communicating, but none of it is that it makes you weak. The sad thing is, is our interpretation of our mind says it's that it makes us different. And then because of that, in our own isolation, we start to come up with all these stories and build all this justification of why we can't socialize and why we shouldn't take the next step. Guys, super awesome stuff. If you have social anxiety, Hopefully this will help you out. Click the free stuff link down below and uh, that we'll put in you know, different types of directions of what you can do. Uh, maybe we'll do in the, the first two week trial of TSL online, uh, which you can do, which covers a lot of these very exercises we were talking about. Um, also, I would really recommend if you want to get good at rapport, one of the best products we have, you can purchase through our AMD Plus uh, advertisement, which is on the free stuff link down below, which you get a ton of free stuff with the free stuff link. But you can also find out about AMD Plus where you get Formula 69, the rapport videos in there. There's actually three that I would say to watch. So there's the two connecting videos, but there's also the advanced rapport techniques, which is the last, the ninth video in the series. This will tell you how to do things like accessing memories, listing of threes, or putting that pressure on so that when we ask qualifiers or we dive deeper into stuff, that you'll connect with somebody on the deepest level. And in that, there will be a huge amount of value for you. So I hope you like this. Click subscribe, watch other videos and all sorts of stuff. If you're listening to us on iTunes, check out the YouTube feed, which you can also find at the free stuff link down below uh, because you'll get to see all the different related videos and playlists that we have for you. And we really put a lot of work into it. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Steve Maida signing off. You guys have a good day.